हेलो एवरीबॉडी अ वेरी गुड आफ्टरनून एंड अ वेरी वॉम वेलकम टू येट अनदर धमाकेदार फराटेदार एंड मजेदार सेशन बाय एम बाई दिस इज प्रीतेश योर होस्ट योर दोस्त एंड अ प्राउड एजुकेटर वेलकमिंग यू टू द वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट डाइवर्सिटी इन लिविंग ऑर्गेनिज्म के ऊपर एक महाक्विज वेलकम अनुष्का वेरी गुड आफ्टरनून वेलकम टू दिस सेशन हैव अ यू डियर गॉड ब्लेस यू सो टुडे वील बी टॉकिंग अबाउट अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट चैप्टर ऑल्सो अ चैप्टर जिसमें बहुत सारे डिटेल्स है बहुत कुछ नया हम सीखते हैं जिसका नाम है डाइवर्सिटी इन लिविंग ऑर्गेनिज्म What we'll be doing today is we'll be solving questions and हम उन questions के solutions के through ही explanation भी करेंगे उस chapter का ठीक है तो very warm welcome to all of you quickly give this video a big fat thumbs up share this video with your friends and school WhatsApp groups and subscribe to the channel because it's absolutely free of cost right also guys I want all of you to quickly give a visit to this beautiful MBI page which is the one stop destination for every student whether a student wants anything and everything whether it is tests questions study material notes solutions explanation to solutions customized tests anything mbib is the page that you should be at so make sure that you give a quick visit to this page and also guys you connect with us on our telegram by just scanning this qr code scan this qr code and become a part of our telegram family where you can interact with us get your doubts solved and also you get the pdfs of the classes you also get the timetable and basically it is mile sur mera tumhara tabhi to bane sur hamara so it is a way where you can connect with us and basically form a bond right chalo so let's begin with the beautiful chapter diversity in living organisms this is a chapter from your grade 9 ncrt during covid ncrt had scrapped this chapter but according to the latest syllabus in many books this chapter is still there so we'll be following also ye aapke grade 11 12th ko lekar ek bahut hi important chapter hai and also from an informative point of view this is a very very interesting chapter so let's begin with diversity in living organisms first statement i have for all of you find the false statement which of these whenever we are attempting the question in the exam we tend to forget we tend to miss out on the words like false incorrect not ठीक है, which of the following statements is incorrect? Our brain will read it. Which of the following statement is correct, and we will make a mistake. Which of the following is not a part of the excretory system? Will our brain will miss out on the word not? Which of the following is a part of the excretory system? So, which of the following is a false statement? So we tend to miss out on such words. You know, negative words. This is a brain trick. Our brain does not understand negative words very easily. So, जो भी words हैं, जैसे कि false, incorrect statement. then not ठीक है तो दीज ऑल वर्ड्स वी मस्ट रीड वेरी वेरी केयरफुली सो वी हैव टू रीड द क्वेश्चन स्टेम एप्सिल्यूटली केयरफुली विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग और फाइंड आउट द फॉल्स स्टेटमेंट फ्रॉम द फॉलोइंग एव्स ना वॉट आर एव्स एव्स आर नथिंग बट बर्ड्स सो बर्ड्स आर वॉम ब्लडेड एग लिंग एंड हैव अ फोर चेम्बर्ड हार्ट बर्ड्स हैव फेदर कवर्ड बॉडी फोर लिम्स आर मॉडिफाइड इन टू विंग्स एंड ब्रीथ थ्रू लंग्स most of the mammals are viviparous fish and fishes amphibians and reptiles are oviparous which of the following is false which of the following is false i'll give you 20 seconds read them and answer the question your time starts now and one so the answer to the question will be fishes amphibians and reptiles are oviparous what they are saying that all fishes all reptiles and all amphibians are egg laying animals which is false why is it false so the first one is definitely true birds are warm blooded they regulate and maintain what do you mean by warm blooded animal even we are warm blooded warm blooded means having our own natural ac and heater which means whenever we feel cold our body becomes warm whenever we feel hot our body sweats and becomes cool we have our own natural ac and heater and those kind of organisms are called as warm blooded organisms and birds and humans are one of them theek hai then their body is indeed covered with feathers they have hollow bones to fly they have very strong chest and shoulder muscles for which from which they can 
mammals give birth to direct young ones. There are only two uh, exceptions over here that is echidna and duck built platypus. So, echidna and duck built platypus, these are the mammals which are oviviparous. They are o, o v, v, paris. O v, v, paris. Okay? Echidna and duck bill platypus, these are the exceptions. Now, coming to the fourth point fishes, amphibians, and reptiles are oviparous, but there are some fishes, there are some fishes and some snakes which are viviparous as well. And that is why your D option becomes the false statement. There are certain fishes like the blue whale. Okay? There are certain snakes which give birth to direct young ones and not to and they do not lay eggs. And that is why they are called as not oviparous but viviparous. And that makes your D as the false statement. Okay? So, this was a question from the animal kingdom. Similarly, hum aage badhte agle question ki aur. Find out the incorrect sentence. Again, hume isme se incorrect sentence ko dhunna hai. To humare paas kya hai? Sab se pehla, protis. Protis are, un, protis are cellular organisms. They include both unicellular eukaryotic organisms. Theek hai? You have to find the incorrect statement. R.H. Whittaker considered cell structure, mode and source of nutrition for classifying the organisms in five kingdoms. Which are the five kingdoms? Monera, Protista, Fungi, Plantae, Animalia. Both Monera and Protista may be autotropic and heterotropic. Monera, Monerans have well-defined nucleus. Isme se you have to find the incorrect statement. Theek hai? What is the incorrect one? I will give you again 20 seconds. Your time starts now. Two and one. ठीक है? Let's see. I feel D is the incorrect one. Tada! We are absolutely right. D is the incorrect one. Now, monerans are the ones which are prokaryotic. Prokaryotic का मतलब यहाँ पे हमारे पास है सिर्फ दो example. One is your bacteria and one is blue green algae or cyanobacteria. ठीक है? So when I talk about monera. Monera are your prokaryotes. What do you mean by the word prokaryotes? Pro matlab primitive. And karyos is your nucleus. You know cytokinesis, karyokinesis. So the one which have a primitive type of nucleus. Primitive type of nucleus matlab no true well defined nucleus. What they have is nucleoid. What they have is nucleoid. What is nucleoid? Nucleoid is your entire nuclear material suspended in the cytoplasm. And when I talk about prokaryotes, I have only two examples. That is the best part about Monera kingdom. Bahut kam hai pe padhai karne ke liye because yaha pe hamare paas hai sirf do examples. That is your bacteria and blue green algae. These are the only two examples of prokaryotes. ठीक है? Protista includes unicellular eukaryotic organisms like amoeba, your paramecium, etc. R.H. Whittaker told that Monera, Protista, Fungi, Plantae, Animalia. It is based on cell structure, mode of nutrition, source of nutrition, mode of reproduction, and body organization. Mode of nutrition in Monera and Protista can be autotrophic or heterotrophic. Monerans include single cell prokaryotes. They don't have a well-defined nucleus and cell organelles and that is why monerans having a well-defined nucleus is the false or incorrect statement. And that makes my option D as the incorrect one. Okay? Kya tha option D? Monerans have a well-defined nucleus. This is false. Because they are prokaryotes, they do not have a well-defined nucleus or a nuclear membrane. All the nuclear material is freely suspended in the cytoplasm. ठीक है आगे बढ़ते हैं नेक्स्ट द क्वेश्चन इज 
gametophytic and sporophytic phases are independent in which of these or which of these you know uh, organisms have separate gametophytic and sporophytic phases pteridophytes ferns bryophytes mosses gymnosperms cycospinous non flowering or angiosperms your flowering plants which of these have separate gametophytic and sporophytic phases theek hai think and answer i'll again give you 20 seconds your time starts now Three, two, and one. Hi, man. Hi, man. Nine. Absolutely. Let me go with you. You are saying pteridophytes, and you are absolutely right. Very good. Very good afternoon, man. Nine. Very good afternoon. It is pteridophytes. Pteridophytes are nothing but your ferns. ठीक है? They have an alteration of dominant sporophytic. Clean pteridophytes. it is differentiated into root stem and leaves who your sporophyte whereas in gametophyte it is small independent and autotrophic bryophytes bryophytes ka matlab kya hota hai bryophytes mein aate hain aapke mosses pteridophytes mein aate hain aapke ferns bryophytes gametophytes आर फ्री लिविंग स्पोरोफाइट्स आर डिपेंडेंट ऑन गैमेटोफाइट्स जिम्नोस्पोम्स एंड एंजियोस्पोम्स दे आर स्पोरोफाइटिक फ्री लिविंग एंड गैमेटोफाइट्स आर डिपेंडेंट ऑन स्पोरोफाइट्स सो जिम्नोस्पोम्स क्या है आपके जिम्नोस्पोम्स है आपके नॉन फ्लारिंग एंड एंजियोस्पोम्स आर फ्लारिंग सो इन ब्रायोफाइट्स यू हैव स्पोरोफाइट डिपेंडेंट ऑन गैमेटोफाइट इन gymnosperms and angiosperms gametophytes are dependent on sporophytes so this is the difference between pteridophyte bryophyte gymnosperm and angiosperm and that is why according to this explanation my pteridophytes becomes the correct answer that they have independent gam gametophytic and sporophytic phases whereas gametophytic is dominant over sporophytic theek hai aage badhte hain प्रोटिस्टा प्रोटिस्टा डिफर्स फ्रॉम मोनेरा इन डैश प्रोटिस्टा यानी कि आपके यूनिसेल्युलर यूकैरियोटिक ऑर्गेनिजम्स मोनेरा यानी कि आपके यूनिसेल्युलर प्रोकैरियोटिक ऑर्गेनिजम्स सो इफ वी सी द फोर ऑप्शंस हाउ इज मोनेरा डिफरेंट फ्रॉम प्रोटिस्टा बेस्ड ऑन अ सेल वॉल बेस्ड ऑन ऑटोट्रॉपिक न्यूट्रिशन बेस्ड ऑन अ फ्लजेला और न्यूक्लियर मेमरेन वेरी वेरी इजी इजीएस्ट क्वेश्चन ऑफ टूडेज क्लास की मोनेरा एंड प्रोटेस्टा में क्या डिफरेंस है वो डिफर करते हैं एक दूसरे से बेस्ड ऑन देयर सेल वॉल कि एक में है एक में नहीं है बेस्ड ऑन देयर ऑटोट्रॉपिक न्यूट्रिशन कि एक ऑटोट्रॉपिक एक हेट्रोट्रॉपिक है बेस्ड ऑन फ्लजेला और बेस्ड ऑन न्यूक्लियर मेम्ब्रेन मैन नाइन हैज ऑलरेडी गिवन मी द आंसर व्हिच इज न्यूक्लियर मेम्ब्रेन लेट्स सी टाना एब्सोल्युटली राइट यू आर राइट न्यूक्लियर मेम्ब्रेन इज द करेक्ट आंसर ऑर्गेनिजम्स दैट बिलोंग टू प्रोटेस्टा यूज यूनिसेल bacteria and cyanobacteria whereas cell wall autotrophic nutrition and flagella it is found in both so the only difference between monera and protists are their nuclear membrane monera do not have a well defined nucleus or a nuclear membrane they have nucleoid which is the nuclear material freely suspended man 9 aaj subah humne jab 10 baje class ki thi tab humne usme dekha tha about nucleoid how prokaryotes have no well defined nucleus or a nuclear membrane they have nucleoid theek hai but monera uh, may nucleoid paya jata hai and protista mein there is a proper nucleus in some organism there are even two nucleus like paramecium now meena and hari they observed an animal in their garden hari called it an insect whereas meera meena said it was earthworm choose the character from the following which confirms that it is an insect now how will you tell whether it is an insect or whether it is a you know a nematelmentis that is a round worm or the earthworm so is it the bilateral symmetrical body 
बॉडी विथ जॉइंटेड लेग्स सिलेंड्रिकल बॉडी या बॉडी विथ लिटिल सेगमेंटेशन विच ऑफ दीज फोर कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स विल प्रूव दैट इट इज एन इंसेक्ट एंड नॉट अर्थवर्म ठीक है मैन नाइन कैन यू हेल्प मी विद आंसर ओवर यर कम ऑन क्विक क्विक फेवी क्विक Which of these will tell that it is an insect? Okay, you are saying B. Let me go with it. Absolutely right. Body with jointed legs or appendages is something which differs an insect from an earthworm. These organisms which have jointed legs, they are called as arthropoda. Arthropoda is the largest phylum having an exoskeleton, right? It is the largest phylum. they may be aquatic terrestrial or parasitic they have jointed appendages and a chitinous exoskeleton or the class insecta which itself represents a major portion of the animal species in the world arthropoda have the following features they have triplo they are triploblastic segmented bilaterally symmetrical body is divided into thoracic head thorax thorax and abdomen so Arthropods are your are the ones which have an exoskeleton. They have joint appendages. So the main characteristic of arthropods is the joint appendages. Can you give me any one more example of an arthropod? Man nine. Any one example? Looking at this, can you see the uh, three pairs of legs that this cockroach has? Looking so easy to handle on a screen, but imagine it live. ये देखिए ये उसके एंटीना आईज कंपाउंड आईज इट हैज थ्री पेयर्स ऑफ लेग्स थ्री थ्री हेड थोरासिक एंड द एबडोम कॉकरोच के अलावा मैन नाइन कैन यू गिव मी एनी वन मोर एग्जांपल कॉकरोच तो आपके सामने है एनी अदर एग्जांपल वेरी गुड एंड स्पाइडर ऑल ऑफ देम कम अंडर आर्थ्रोपॉड्स ठीक है वेरी गुड चलो मूविंग ऑन टू द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन फाइव किंगडम सिस्टम ऑफ क्लासिफिकेशन सजेस्टेड बाई आर एच विटेकर इज बेस्ड ऑन दैश ये हमने फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन में भी किया था कि वॉट ऑल डिफरेंट कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स डिड ही चूज वाइल ही डिवाइडेड ऑल द ऑर्गेनिजम इन द वर्ल्ड इन टू फाइव किंगडम्स डिड ही चूज ओनली कॉम्प्लेक्सिटी ऑफ बॉडी ऑर्गेनाइजेशन और ही चोज ओनली मोड ऑफ रिप्रोडक्शन और ही चोज ओनली मोड ऑफ न्यूट्रिशन और ही चोज ऑल ऑफ दीज विच ऑफ दीज डिड ही चूज एज द कैरेक्टरिस्टिक to divide the organisms into five kingdoms what do you think is the correct answer i'll give you 30 seconds your time starts now Four, three, two, and one. So you are suggesting D. Let me see. Absolutely correct. Very good, man. Nine. But by the way, please tell me your name. Very good. Great answer. So he did choose all the five, all the four different characteristics. ठीक है? So he plantae, fungi, and animalia. Now he chose the complexity of cell structure, whether it is eukaryotic or prokaryotic. body organization unicellular or multicellular thallus organization autotrophic or heterotrophic nutrition asexual or sexual reproduction and phylogenetic relationships manish okay so he chose all the different characteristics when he divided the organisms into five kingdoms you can see you have got monera protista fungi plantae and animalia kingdom ke andar aata hai fir aapka class order Uh, you know division then uh, genus species there are multiple sub elements under each kingdom family aati hai family class uh, gene uh, you know genus order division species bahut sare iske under bhi aate hain theek hai so these were your five kingdoms suggested by r h whitaker next question which one of the following is not true for fungi very important here don't miss this word not ठीक है, which of the following is not true for fungi? They are eukaryotes. They possess purely cellulosic cell wall. They are heterotrophs. They are both unicellular and multicellular. Which of these is not true? What do you think? Come on, think and answer. Thirty seconds. Your time starts now.
2 and 1. ठीक है? So Manish, you say that A is the correct answer. Let's see. Oh, oh, oopsie daisy. नहीं, ये गलत है. क्यों गलत है? तो आइए देखते हैं. Now, they are eukaryotes. This is wrong. मतलब, this is true. They are eukaryotes. Why? Because they have a well-defined nucleus and a nuclear membrane. मैंने आपको बताया था ना, prokaryotes के आपके पास बस दो examples हैं, bacteria and blue green algae. Blue green algae का दूसरा नाम है cyanobacteria. These are the only two examples of prokaryotes. इसके अलावा सारे cells eukaryotes हैं. तो इसलिए ये आपका answer नहीं है. Then they are heterotrophic. Yes, they are heterotrophic. They are saprophytic in nutrition. They are uh, unicellular and multicellular, yeast is unicellular, Aapke mushrooms are multicellular. But they have a purely cellulosic cell wall, ye galat hai. The cell wall can be made of chitin, the cell wall can be made of, uh, you know, lignin, right? So they have got cell walls made of different uh, materials, it is not purely cellulose. Theek hai? To isliye aapka B correct answer hoga. Let's see. See, B is the correct answer, not A. Got it, Manish? Chalye. Let us look at the solution. Solution mein humare paas kya hai? They are heterotropic. Chitin, yeast is unicellular, whereas mushrooms are multicellular. To is liye, aapka B will be the correct answer. Ki they have a cellulosic cell wall, ye galat hai. The cell wall can be made of chitin, it can be made of lignin and different other complex sugars. Then, which of the following have vascular tissue, produce pores and do not have seeds? Which of these have a vascular tissue? Yani ki aapka xylem phloem. It produces pores but it doesn't have seeds. Ye kaun hai? Bryophytes, mosses, pteridophytes, ferns, gymnosperms, non-flowering, angiosperms, flowering. What is the correct answer? Think and tell me, I'll give you 30 seconds. Five more seconds and time is up. So let's see, I feel the answer will be do not have seeds. Okay, so do not have species mein hona chahiye gymnosperms. Let's see, oopsie daisy, I am wrong. So Manish, you are saying B is the correct answer? Absolutely right Manish. You were absolutely correct, pteridophytes or your ferns are the correct answer. Theek hai? So, you should have answered a little fast Manish, but chalo, koi baat nahi. So, what do we have as the explanation? Xylem and phloem come bolte hain. Thik hai? Bryophytes, they are avascular. Bryophytes, yani ki aapke mosses. They are avascular, they do not have specialized tissue for conduction of water and other substances. Pteridophytes. Pteridophytes on the other hand are seedless. Pteridophytes yani ki your ferns. They are seedless, vascular uh, plants and they produce, reproduce by spores. Plants with well differentiated reproductive parts that ultimately call, uh, make seeds are called phanerogams which are further divided into gymnosperms and angiosperms. So, phanerogams ke under aapke paas hai, gymnosperms and angiosperms. Hi Naitik Tiwari, hi Fai, how are you dear? So we know that pteridophytes or ferns are the ones which have a vascular tissue. It is not bryophyte, gymnosperms or angiosperms. Chaliye. Nephridia. Nephridia of earthworms are performing same function as dash. So nephridia jo earthworm mein paaya jata hai, it is same as gills of a prawn, flame cells of planaria, trachea of insects or nematoblasts of hydra. How are nephridia homologous to Gills of prawns, flame cells of planaria, trachea of insects or nematoblasts of hydra. Think and answer, I will give you 30 seconds, your time starts now.
seconds, think, think, think. Gills, flame cells, trachea or nematoblasts. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Okay. So, if you ask me, I will give a wild guess and I will go with nematoblast of Hydra. Oopsie daisy, I am wrong. Manish, even you told D, but we both are wrong. The correct answer are flame cells of planaria. Let us see how. So, when I talk about nephridia, so you can see these are the nephridia, the black ones. Okay? The black ones are the nephridia. How are they? To the flame cells in planaria, let us see. So, nephridia are segmentedly arranged excretory organs. They are the excretory organs in earthworm. The function is similar to the flame cells of planaria. Gills of the prawns, trachea of the insects are used for respiration. Cyano, no, nidoblasts or nematoblasts are the special cells act as stinging cells. So, when we saw of nematoblasts in hydra, they are to attack. Nematoblasts are primarily used for anchorage, defense and for capturing the prey. So, the answer will be flame cells of planaria. So, when we see the nephridia, they are nothing but excretory parts of the earthworm. They are similar to the flame cells in planaria because when we see the gills of prawns, Gills of prawns and trachea of insects, these two, they are meant for respiration. These are meant to attack. Whereas this and this, they both are meant for excretion. Clear? Manish? Clear? Clear who are yes or no? Quickly tell me in the chat. Is this concept clear? Flame cells and nephridia, gills and trachea and nematoblasts. Yes or no? Quickly tell me in the chat Manish. Very good. Perfect. Chaliye. Aage badte hai. Towards the next question. Yeah. This is my last question. Theek hai? So, which of the following animals belong to the phylum mollusks? Theek hai? So, we have got devil fish, dog fish, silver fish, jellyfish. In me se kaun sa ek mollusk hai? Which of these is a mollusk? Devil fish, dog fish, silver fish, jellyfish. What do you think? What do you think is the answer Manish? Netik? Quick, quick, very quick. Jaldi, jaldi, jaldi. Give it a try. Okay, Manish, you say B. Let me go with you. Oopsie daisy. Galat. The answer is not even D. The answer is A, devil fish. Devil fish, yani ki, aapka? Octopus. Yes. One of the names for octopus is devil fish. The devil fish is also called as the giant devil ray. Belong to mollusca. Dogfish belongs to chordata. Silverfish belongs to arthropoda which is an insect. And jellyfish belongs to nidaria phylum. Okay. So, we have got chordata, arthropoda, nidaria whereas your devil fish or the octopus, it belongs to mollusk. Okay? So, octopus ka other name hai devil fish. It is also called as the giant devil ray. New information. Right? That's why I tell you, you should know may way much more beyond your NCRT. Okay? So, what did we do in today's class? In today's class, we learnt about the, uh, you know, five, yes, 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 Ma Manish, you have to remember the examples, it is compulsory. What I'll do is, I'll do a class on one shot on diversity in living organisms where I'll be explaining you every kingdom and we'll be doing its examples also and I'll give you tricks, I'll give you tricks and tips to remember the examples and the characteristics. Okay, we'll do that. Now, very important is ki what all we did in today's class. So, today we did about, you know, RHP taker, Hi, Pavan. 
uh, RH with taker, we also did how the kingdoms were classified. We did about plant kingdom, bryophyta, pteridophyta, gymnosperms, angiosperms, phanograms, FZ, everything. We did about the different animal kingdoms. We did about different, you know, uh, uh, we did about arthropoda, mollusca, hai na? Ye sab aves humne kiya, mammals humne kiya. We did a lot in a short uh, period of time. In 10 questions, we learnt a lot about the different uh, kingdoms. We learnt about monera, protesta, fungi, fungi ke upar bhi humne questions kiye. So, it was a very interesting class. Now, please tell me in the comment section comment ye chat hai job abhi bhej rahe ho ye chat hai tell me in the comment section whether you want a one shot class on diversity in living organisms or and is it going to come in your exams tell me that thank you so much pavan god bless you tell me that main ek one shot class lunga one shot jisme hum sare panch kingdom karenge unke characteristics unke andar ke classifications unka naming और उनके एग्जांपल्स प्लस उस क्लास की सबसे बड़ी हाईलाइट होगी कि मैं आपको ऐसे टिप्स दूंगा ऐसे ट्रिक्स दूंगा कि आपको कोई दो बजे भी उठा के पूछेगा ना रात को पवन मुझे बता मोनेरा के एग्जांपल्स आप बोल दोगे मोनेरा हां बैक्टीरिया ऑफ ब्लू ग्रीन एलगे सो वेल आई विल टीच यू दैट इज माय गारंटी बट यू हैव टू टेल मी इन द कमेंट सेक्शन नॉट इन द चैट ठीक है सो मनीष नैतिक एंड पवन प्लीज हेल्प मी ओवर देयर इसके अलावा एक बार एमबाई पेज विजिट कर लीजिए बहुत ही अच्छा बढ़िया सा पेज है इट इज बेसिकली एनीथिंग एंड एवरीथिंग दैट अ स्टूडेंट कैन एवर आस्क फॉर एंड यू हैव आल्सो गॉट योर टेलीग्राम ऐप वेयर यू कैन यू नो स्कैन दिस क्यूआर कोड जॉइन अ टेलीग्राम चैनल एंड आस्क योर डाउट्स गेट द पीडीएफ्स ऑफ द क्लास गेट द टाइम टेबल एंड बेसिकली बिल्ड अ कनेक्ट ठीक है सो टेल मी इन द कमेंट सेक्शन आई होप यू गाइस एंजॉयड लर्निंग टुडे अंटिल वी मीट नेक्स्ट आई विल बी कमिंग अगेन एट 6 पीएम टुडे टिल देन This is Pritesh, your host, your dose, and a proud educator from Mbibe. Signing off for now. Do not forget to give this video a big fat thumbs up. Share this video with your friends and school WhatsApp groups, and subscribe to the channel because it's absolutely free. Until until we meet next, take care of yourself, stay healthy, stay happy, stay blessed, and keep Mbibeing. Keep Mbibeing. We believe in you.